Okay, good morning. <clears throat> um, so uh, uh, what I thought I'd do for this last uh, lecture is, uh, so, so I want to finish up a couple of loose ends from uh, last time about topological insulators. In particular, I want to uh, tell you what's special about the surface of a topological uh, insulator. And that will lead into um, a discussion of topological superconductivity. Um, uh, so I'll say a little bit about superconductivity, Majorana, Kitaev, um, uh, and a little bit about uh, uh, sort of generalizations of, of this uh, topological band theory idea that I think you'll probably hear a little bit more about uh, next week. Um, so, uh, so let me uh, uh, just start with um, the surface of a topological insulator. So remember we talked about a topological insulator yesterday and then and I think Zahid and NVIDIA also um, uh, uh, talked a little bit uh, about this. And so I just want to uh, 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 you know, emphasize that this surface of a topological insulator which has sort of a, an odd number or, or a single uh, a Dirac cone is a very special um, uh, thing. Um, so with time reversal symmetry, it's something that could only exist on the surface of a three-dimensional system, okay? Um, and, uh, uh, and, you know, there, it has this sort of correlation between the spin and the charge because, because the, um, the direction in which the electrons are going in is sort of correlated with the uh, spin, okay? And so there's a sense in which a charge current is the same thing as a spin density and a spin current is the same thing as a charge density in these helical uh, surface states. And, um, and the other uh, sort of important feature that they have is, is, is the fact that, uh, you know, when you go around this Dirac point, um, you pick up my favorite minus sign. Um, and, uh, and that pi Berry phase um, uh, sort of endows these, uh, these uh, uh, electrons with a very robust property, which uh, means that you can't localize them, okay? And, and so this is something that you can see sort of um, if you do uh, perturbation theory in, in a just, you know, if you, if you do weak disorder, um, then there's a classic um, uh, 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 calculation one can do to calculate the sort of first correction um, due to localization. Okay, and so this is called weak localization. And what you find is that due to this pi Berry phase, the sign of the weak localization correction um, is, is negative. So instead of driving you towards localization, it, it drives you towards being a better uh, conductor. Okay? Um, and, but, but in fact, as I, as I explained um, uh, last time, um, it's even better than that. Um, even if you have strong disorder, these uh, surface states are impossible to localize. And again, it's the same argument that I uh, showed you last time, which is that if you put the, um, uh, the surface on with periodic boundary conditions, then you can show that when you thread a flux, the surface states have to sort of reconnect with each other, which means that it's impossible for the surface states to not know about the boundary condition, which means they have to be extended, okay? So, um, so this is uh, a feature of, 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 of these uh, surface states. Okay, so but what I want to uh, 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 talk about um, a little bit now is um, the interesting things that can happen if you destroy the surface states, okay? So, so this, uh, this degeneracy between the conduction band and the valence band is protected by symmetry, okay, by time reversal symmetry. Um, but you can ask, well, what could happen if I break that symmetry? And so interesting things can happen. Um, in particularly, if you, if you break time reversal symmetry, um, then, uh, then you get something that's sort of like a quantum Hall state, which is interesting, okay? Um, and in addition, you know, of course, uh, in this sort of band theory, I've implicitly assumed the charge is conserved, 
Okay, um, but if you make it into a superconductor, then you violate the um, the, the conservation the, the conservation of charge is spontaneously uh, uh, broken, and um, uh, and then in the superconducting state, you can also open up a gap, and this sur superconducting uh, surface state is is also uh, something that is uh, interesting. Now, um, so actually, you can ask the question: Well, um, uh, uh, you know, let's suppose I keep both you know, the charge conservation, the U1 gauge symmetry, and I keep time reversal symmetry, is it possible to open up a, a gap at the surface in that case? Okay? And um, without interactions, the answer is no. Okay? So in the context of this uh, uh, sort of topological band theory where we're, we're, where we're saying we can, we're connected to states where you can turn the interactions off, then, uh, then it's impossible to, uh, to open up a gap in these surface states. Um, but uh, if you allow yourself to think about strong, strongly interacting states, then it turns out it is possible. And so there's an interesting question of um, what a, uh, a symmetry preserving gap state would be. And it turns out that it has to have an intrinsic topological order that's sort of similar to a uh, non abelian fractional quantum Hall state. Okay, and so hopefully, I'm just, I'm not going to go into this in, in very much detail, but I, at the end, um, it, hopefully if there's time, I'll, I'll mention a little bit about what this is about. Okay, so, um, uh, so let's uh, talk about the, surf, the, the simple thing first, which is, um, let's imagine you break time reversal symmetry, and the simplest way to break time reversal symmetry is just to add a magnetic field, perpendicular magnetic field. So now we're, we're back to doing the uh, quantum Hall effect, the integer quantum Hall effect problem, and so, so there's a, there's a, a good, um, uh, homework problem if you have never done it before, which is to calculate the Landau level spectrum for uh, uh, Dirac uh, electrons. Okay, and so that's not hard to do. It's almost it's almost exactly the same as the sort of classic uh, Landau level problem in a parab parabolic uh, band structure. Um, uh, so all you need to do is to uh, uh, take the uh, Dirac Hamiltonian and square it. Okay, and then it turns into a quadratic uh, uh, a band, and then you can do the same calculation you did before. But what you learn when you do that, though, is that the, um, the spectrum of uh, Landau levels for uh, Dirac electrons has this uh, magic uh, state exactly at zero. Okay, so this, this is zero uh, lambda level, and then uh, you know the lambda levels uh, 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 come out like square root of n. Okay, now. Um, uh, so, so this zero level, so, so you can see that this spectrum here sort of has a, uh, has a can have a particle hole type symmetry, okay? And um, so this gives you something interesting because you know that the Hall conductivity, um, uh, uh, if you change the Fermi energy crossing one of the Landau levels, then the Hall conductivity has to change by E squared over H, okay? That's the integer quantum Hall effect. Every time you cross a Landau level, the... Uh, you know, the Hall conductivity changes by E squared over H. Um, but, but because you have this uh, particle hole symmetry, what you, uh, what you expect is that, you know, uh, if I change the sign of the Fermi energy, I should change the sign of sigma xy. And so that means that if I go from here to here, then the, the, you know, the Hall conductivity has to go from minus a half to plus a half. So, so, uh, so in fact, um, the, uh, if I take the surface and think about what the Hall conductivity is, this says that the Hall sh conductivity should be integer quantized, but in half integer units. Okay, and um, so, so, uh, so at first thought, this sort of violates all of the rules that you uh, should uh, think, because um, the integer quantum Hall effect, um, you know, I gave you Laughlin's argument, which said that you know, the integer quantum Hall effect has to be integer quantized. Okay, and so this looks like it's, but this is this is non-interacting electrons, and so it looks like some. How can you get a fractional uh, integer quantum Hall effect? Okay, so so the resolution of this paradox is that um, the surface, um, you know, so if I imagine a slab. Okay, the resolution is that the top surface of the slab is always connected to the bottom surface. Okay, there's a theorem that says that if you have, you know, the surface is the boundary of the inter interior, and there's a theorem that says that you can't cut the surface. Okay, um, so, so the surface, the top surface is always connected to the bottom surface, and so, so in an experiment, you're always going to be measuring the top surface and the bottom surface in parallel 
which, uh, which basically doubles this uh, half integer into an integer, okay? And so, so in fact, if you had, you know, the top and the bottom surface were both in sigma xy equals plus a half, then, um, well, so, you know, the reason you know that the, the integer quantum Hall effect always has to be integer quantized is because the transport is always in edge states, right? And the edge states always uh, carry an integer conductance. Okay, so what you see here, though, is that the top uh, uh, surface and the bottom surface um, will share um, uh, a single uh, chiral edge state that goes around the edge. Okay, and so that's that's how this uh, this fractional uh, you know fractional fractional integer quantum Hall effect is uh, is 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 not breaking the rules. Yes. So you're saying the one half can never be experimentally observed? Not in a uh, 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 transport experiment, okay? Because a transport experiment in the in the quantum Hall effect is always measuring edge states. So so look, you can observe it if 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 what you want to say is you know I know it's the top and the bottom surface, so I'm going to divide the conductance that I have by two, okay? You could do that, and I don't know if you want to claim that's observing the one half or not, but um, yeah, okay, yeah, yes. Um, pardon me. Well, no, actually, well, the important thing is, is that we're really in three dimensions, okay? Um, uh, but the surface of the three-dimensional object is two, two dimensions, okay? So, these, so these, these Dirac fermions are two plus one dimensional, okay? But they are living on the, um, on the boundary of a three plus one dimensional system. But in the last argument, In the what? The Laughlin argument was two. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Right. You see, the thing is, is that the surface can't have an edge. Right? There's, some, there's a theorem that says that the boundary of a boundary is nothing. Okay? So, so if you have a surface, the surface can't have, can't have an edge. Okay, so, so all you can do is have, um, uh, you know, connect the top surface to the bottom surface, then you can have a boundary between them, but, um, but that, you know, uh, doubles it. Okay, all right, so, um, uh, so uh, uh, you know, another way of thinking about this is you can sort of imagine taking, you know, so, so um, another way of, uh, so, so you can, you can, you can uh, get the, you can break time reversal symmetry with an orbital magnetic field which gives you Lando levels. Another way that you can break time reversal symmetry is by um, applying a Zeeman magnetic field, a magnetic field that couples to the spin and not the uh, orbital, okay? And so that doesn't give you Landau levels, but it breaks time reversal symmetry and opens up um, an energy gap at the surface, okay? And in fact, um, uh, this is a, um, a very uh, uh, um, uh, uh, nice route to sort of engineering um, uh, this uh, integer quantum Hall effect um, in a system. So, so, uh, so there are beautiful experiments. I, I don't have any slides about them, but there are beautiful uh, recent experiments where people have um, basically taken a topological insulator and um, put magnetic uh, atoms in it to make it uh, magnetic. And, um, and, and when it's uh, magnetic, then um, the uh, magnetization basically gaps the surface state and, and gives you an integer quantum Hall state. And this gives you what's called the anomalous uh, a quantum Hall, the quantum anomalous Hall effect, which, which basically gives you a quantum Hall effect when you don't have an externally applied uh, magnetic field. So, so in a sense, this is like a realization of Haldane's um, you know, uh, 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 vision um, of, of having a quantum Hall effect without Lando levels, okay? Um, so, uh, um, but in any case, uh, so you could do this. Now, another way you could uh, uh, think about this is you could sort of um, uh, unfold it, okay? So I have, I have the, 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 the uh, you know, I've gapped my surface states on the top and the bottom. If I unfold it, then uh, what that is like is having um, sort of opposite uh, magnetizations uh, uh, like this, and then what you learn is is that if you have, and so this gives you um, putting on the Zeeman field uh, gives you a mass to your uh, Dirac uh, two, two plus one dimensional uh, Dirac fermions, and on a domain wall where that mass changes sign, um, then uh, uh, then again you have uh, one of these uh, chiral uh, uh, Dirac fermion modes. 
Okay, and so uh, so this is um, uh, sort of an interesting thing that one one it would be nice to be able to make something like this. Okay. Yes. So this chiral mode is it specially separated the two, or is it really just one mode? Um, which can be very far apart. Well, let's be careful. So, so uh, you have to. Uh, so now, of course, um, in this picture, I haven't specified what's happening on the, you know, on all of the other surfaces of the TI. Okay. So, so if there's really nothing there, then everything is gapless uh, 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 along the, 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 the bottom. And, and then, you know, this chiral mode just sort of goes from this gapless region into the other gapless region. And it's the only chiral mode there is, aside from this. But, but maybe it would be better to think, imagine you have a sphere of topological insulator, and in the northern hemisphere, I have, um, you know, uh, you know the, the uh, magnetization up, and in the, in the southern hemisphere, I have it down. So then on the equator, there's going to be a single chiral mode that goes around. Okay, and that's that's all there is. Good. Okay. All right. So, um, so another way that you can think about this. Okay. So we have this uh, uh, this, um, uh, this kind of fractional integer quantum Hall effect. Another, but it's really com you know it's really coming because the, we have the um, the the um, two dimensional surface of a three dimensional bulk. Okay, and so um, uh, another way that you can think about this, and this this is sort of an insight from 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 Chi Hughes and Zhang and and, and others, um, is that you can think of this as sort of a three dimensional um, property of the topological insulator. And the idea is is that it's like a magnetoelectric effect. So 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 what I want you to imagine is a cylinder of topological insulator. And let me imagine that around the uh, circumference of the cylinder, I have, um, uh, I've, I've put a magnetization which opens an energy gap, okay? So it has a Hall conductivity of, you know, E squared over 2H. Plus, you know, uh, E squared over 2H, you know, uh, plus some integer which is, which depends on exactly where the, where, you know, where the lamp, where, you know, where the Fermi energy is, okay? Um, so, uh, uh, so the point, though, is, is that um, if I apply an electric field down the cylinder, so then, then let's think about what happens. So an electric field down the cylinder, well, um, uh, so that's going to give me a, since, since there's a Hall conductivity on the, on the circumference, that's going to give me an electric current which, um, which flows around the um, surface of the cylinder. Okay, and if you think about, uh, you know, just go back to freshman uh, E and M, it's like a solenoid, right? And so that uh, current going around is going to create a magnetic field um, uh, down the axis. Okay, and so so you can compute it, and and so that is like a magnetization that um, uh, gets produced in the in the system. Okay, so if I think of this uh, um, this current going around as being like a bound current in a bar magnet. Okay, that is just like a magnetization. And so what you learn is that um, uh, you get a magnetization which is proportional to the applied electric field. Okay, and so this is called a magnetoelectric effect. And, um, and the coefficient of this uh, magnetization is, um, is, you know, uh, is, is related to this, uh, this quantized uh, Hall conductivity, okay? And now, of course, the quantized Hall conductivity, um, it's only the fractional part of it that's quantized. You could always add a, uh, you know, an arbitrary integer multiple of E squared over H, and that's sort of, you know, so this integer is not determined by just what's happening in the bulk. But the one half is. I could change the integer just by putting in a, a two-dimensional surface of quantum Hall effect on it. Okay. So what this means, though, is is so I can interpret this magnetoelectric coefficient if I want to think about a uh, uh, if I want to think about a you know a Lagrangian that would give me a magnetization proportional to the electric f uh, field, then it would be a term which is E dot B. Okay, and so, uh, so uh, having a term in, in, in a Lagrangian proportional to E dot B, that's sort of a famous thing. So this is uh, often called a theta term. And, um, 
And so uh, what this uh, suggests is that this one half tells you that the theta is equal to pi modulo 2 pi. And so you can sort of uh, think that uh, now time reversal symmetry, if you had it, would say that uh, take theta to minus theta. Okay, um, but since theta is ambiguous 